Chapter 67, 1300, was the number on the door. Kate pulled out a lanyard from under her collar with a magnetic card attached to it. I've lived here my whole life, she said, swiping the card and opening the door. I never thought I'd leave. I might have felt the same way if my quarters were like Lod's. It wasn't an apartment. It was a penthouse, beautifully furnished, immaculately clean, with a panoramic view of the compound through a window running the length of the room. None of this furniture came from a dumpster, I said. Nothing in the compound comes from dumpsters. What about the food and supply drops the community makes? It's a ruse, Kate answered. Laud set it up so they'd think we were barbarians. He didn't want them trying to find us to see where we, to see what we have. We throw the stuff away, except the organic material for the sewer plant. The pod complex made the community's circular room look like a kid's fort slammed together in a backyard. There were two other towers, one on the right, one on the left. Both of them were one floor short of the middle tower we were in. Glass elevator shafts ran from the plaza to the top of each. Make yourself at home, Kate said. The kitchen's over there, she pointed to a door. And you can step up to the window and look out. It's mirrored to a glass. No one can see in. There was a spotting scope on a tripod next to the window. I walked over and looked down. Everything could be seen from Laud's lair. There was a central plaza between three towers with a huge swimming pool in the middle of it. Tables had been set up around the pool where they had just served Christmas breakfast. The only person in the plaza now was a man standing by a small door between the right and left towers. Guard, Kate said, joining me. They work four hour shifts. They're armed, but they've never pulled their pistols from their holsters as far as I know. Where's Coop? She pointed, left tower, bottom floor. There are two sky bridges connecting the towers. One on the seventh floor and one on the third floor. Take the one on the third floor, then use the stairs. The, infir the infirmary is midway down the hall on the right side. He's in examination room two, handcuffed to the bed. The key to the cuffs is in the nurse's desk, which you'll see when you walk in top right hand drawer. She gave me her key card. You'll need this to get into the infirmary and into the examination room where Coop is. You said there was someone guarding the infirmary. Mike, Kate said. I'll swing by and invite him to the meeting. He's a shadow wannabe. He'll come. He wasn't happy about standing outside the infirmary guarding, guarding a handcuffed prisoner locked inside on Christmas Day. When do we leave? I'll go down to the plaza in a few minutes. I told everyone about the meeting at breakfast. Soon, as, they, as soon as they see me, they'll start wandering down. Not everyone is going to show, but they'll be watching from their windows and balconies. This will give you and Coop a good chance of reaching the vent without being seen. She pointed at the spotting scope. Keep an eye on me. I'll take my sunglasses off when I think it's okay for you to get Coop. She handed me two pairs of sunglasses. What are these for? A disguise, she answered. Not a very good one, what? but the only people who wear sunglasses are shadows. The pod tends to avoid shadows since we keep an eye on them, as well as an eye out for intruders. If you happen to run into someone, just walk by purposely, like you know what you're going, like you know where you're going and what you're doing. Chances are they won't say anything to you. Shadows make people nervous. They tend not to make eye contact with us. How many people are down here? Well over a hundred in the compound and another dozen or so in the mushrooms. Then there are people on top who work for us, although I doubt they know much about us. Laud and the originals are the only people who know exactly how many. Unless you're a shadow, a guard, or an original, people keep to themselves. They are afraid to ask questions because that draws attention to them. I put the shades in my pocket. Do I have time to get something to eat? I asked. Kate led me to a kitchen with cherry cabinets, granite counters, and stainless steel appliances. She opened the refrigerator. It was stuffed with food. Wow. We don't eat out of dumpsters. I noticed you ate the cake. 
I have a thing for chocolate, and I watched their cook dump the ingredients out of a sealed kick mix box. I figured it wasn't ruined. I figured it wasn't tainted. Where does all of this stuff come from? The commissary? Aside from food, we can get almost anything we want, except televisions, radios, computers, most newspapers, most books, or conduits of corruption, as Laud and the Originals call them. The store has all the food you'll find in a regular grocery store above, and it's restocked a couple times a week. A catalog is, a catalog is printed out once a month with furniture, appliances, and other goods. You pick out what you want and it, arri it arrives in a week or two, and it's all free. I guess when they first came down here, it was a pretty, it was pretty utilitarian. Canned and powdered food, simple furniture, nuclear bomb shelter decor. By the time I came along, the mushroom farm was producing and, and things had changed. I made two bologna and cheese sandwiches and washed them down with a quart of organic orange juice. Then I mixed up some tuna and mayo and made Coop a couple of sandwiches to go. I didn't believe he was sick of tuna.